You walk into the kitchen, look up at the night sky through the window, and see thousands of twinkling stars scattered across the darkness. Have you ever wondered where all of this came from? Not just the stars, but, you know, everything. The moon, the planets, your house, your dog, even you. Today, I'm going to explain the Big Bang Theory to you like you're five years old. And by the end, you'll understand how everything in the entire universe started from something smaller than the tiniest dot you can imagine. The Big Bang Theory isn't about explosions or loud noises, even though the name sounds like it should be. It's actually the scientific explanation for how our entire universe began. Think of it as the ultimate origin story, like how superheroes get their powers. Except, you know, this story is about how everything that exists got its start. Picture the smallest thing you can think of. Maybe it's a grain of sand, or a speck of dust, or even a tiny ant. Now imagine something a billion trillion times smaller than that. So small, that if you had the most powerful magnifying glass in the world, you still couldn't see it. That incredibly tiny thing contained everything that would eventually become our entire universe. All the stars, all the planets, all the galaxies, all the space between them. And yes, all the stuff that would eventually become you and me. It was all swished together in this impossibly tiny point. And this tiny point wasn't just small, it was also incredibly hot and dense. Dense means packed together really, really tightly. Imagine trying to stuff your entire bedroom, including your bed, your dresser, all your toys, and even the walls, into a space smaller than the period at the end of this sentence. That is how tightly packed everything was in this tiny point. And hot? It was hotter than anything you could imagine. Hotter than the sun, hotter than lava, hotter than the hottest oven turned up to its maximum setting. About 13.8 billion years ago, something incredible happened to this tiny, hot, dense point. It started to expand. And not like a balloon being slowly blown up, but incredibly fast. Faster than anything you've ever seen. In less than one second, this tiny point grew from smaller than you can imagine to bigger than a grapefruit. Now, I know that might not sound like much, but remember, it started smaller than the tiniest speck of dust. This rapid expansion is what scientists call the Big Bang. But here's the really important part that lots of people get confused about. The Big Bang wasn't an explosion that happened somewhere out in empty space. There was no empty space for it to explode into because, well, space itself was created during the Big Bang. Before the Big Bang, there was no space, no time, no anything. The Big Bang created space and time itself. It's like if you were drawing a picture, but instead of drawing on a piece of paper that already existed, you were creating the paper at the same time that you were drawing the picture. Now as this tiny point expanded and became bigger, it also started to cool down. Just like when you take a hot pizza out of the oven and it slowly gets cooler as time passes. The expanding universe got cooler as it got bigger. But even as it cooled down, it was still incredibly hot, much hotter than anything on Earth today. During the first few minutes after the Big Bang, the universe was like a hot soup of the smallest building blocks of matter. These building blocks are called particles, and they're so tiny that you can't see them even with the most powerful microscope. Think of them like invisible Lego blocks that everything else is made from. In this hot soup, these tiny invisible Lego blocks were bouncing around, bumping into each other, and sometimes sticking together to make slightly bigger invisible Lego blocks. Now, the most important thing that happened during these first few minutes was the creation of these simplest elements. Elements are like the basic ingredients for everything in the universe. Just like how you need flour for eggs and milk to make pancakes, the universe needed basic elements to eventually make stars, planets, and everything else. The first elements created were hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen is the simplest element, like the most basic Lego block you can have. Helium is just slightly more complicated, like two Lego blocks stuck together. But for hundreds of thousands of years after the Big Bang, the universe was still too hot for anything really exciting to happen. It was filled with this hot soup of particles and the first elements, but it was so hot that light couldn't really travel very far. Imagine trying to see through really thick fog, except instead of water droplets making the fog, it was tiny particles bouncing around everywhere. The universe was basically foggy. Then, about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, something amazing happened. The universe had cooled down enough that the fog cleared, and for the first time, light could travel freely through space. Now this moment is called recombination, and it's when the universe became transparent. If you had been there with a flashlight, you would have been able to see the light from your flashlight travel across the universe instead of being blocked by all those bouncing particles. But the universe was still pretty boring at this point. It was mostly just hydrogen and helium gas floating around in space. I mean, there were no stars yet, no planets, no galaxies, nothing really interesting to look at. Just gas clouds drifting through the darkness. Over millions and millions of years, gravity, though, started to do its job. Gravity is that force that pulls everything together. 
It's what makes apples fall from trees and what keeps you from floating off into space. Now, in the early universe, gravity slowly started pulling these gas clouds together. Some areas had a little bit more gas than others, and gravity pulled even more gas toward these denser areas. It's like when you're playing in a sandbox and you start making a small pile of sand. Once you have a little pile, it's easier to add more sand to make the pile even bigger. As these gas clouds got pulled together by gravity, they became denser and hotter. When enough gas got squished together in one place, something incredible happened. The gas got so hot and dense that it started a process called nuclear fusion. Now, nuclear fusion is like a special kind of fire that happens when you squish hydrogen together so tightly that it turns into helium and releases enormous amounts of energy. And this energy comes out as heat and light. Now, when nuclear fusion started happening in these dense gas clouds, the first stars were born. Stars are basically giant balls of gas that are constantly having nuclear fusion reactions inside of them. The light and heat from these fusion reactions is what makes stars shine. So, when you look up at the night sky and see twinkling stars, you're seeing the light from nuclear fusion reactions happening millions or even billions of miles away. These first stars were very different from our sun. They were much bigger and much hotter, and they didn't live very long. Big stars burn through their fuel much faster than smaller stars. When these giant first stars ran out of fuel, they died in spectacular explosions called supernovas. A supernova is like the biggest fireworks show you can imagine. Except, instead of lasting a few minutes, it can be seen from across the entire universe. These supernova explosions were incredibly important for the development of the universe. Remember how the Big Bang only created hydrogen and helium? Well, inside the cores of these first stars, nuclear fusion created heavier elements like carbon, oxygen, iron, and many others. When the stars exploded in supernovas, they scattered all of these new elements throughout space. These heavier elements are what actually made planets possible, and they're also what made life possible. The calcium in your bones, the iron in your blood, and the oxygen that you breathe were all created inside of stars billions of years ago. As more and more stars formed, lived, and died, they created more and more heavy elements. These elements mixed with the hydrogen and helium gas clouds, and new generations of stars formed from these enriched gas clouds. Some of these newer stars had planets forming around them, including our own sun and the planets in our solar system. Meanwhile, gravity was working on an even larger scale. Just like how it pulled gas together from stars, gravity also pulled stars together to form galaxies. A galaxy is like a huge city of stars, containing billions or even trillions of stars, all held together by gravity. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, contains over 100 billion stars. But the story doesn't end there. Gravity kept on working on even larger scales, pulling galaxies together into groups and clusters. Today, we can see billions of galaxies scattered throughout the observable universe, each one containing billions of stars, and many of those stars have planets orbiting around them. One of the most amazing pieces of evidence for the Big Bang Theory is something called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. Remember how I mentioned about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe became transparent for the first time? Well, at that moment, light started traveling freely through space. The light is actually still traveling through space today, and we can detect it with special telescopes. It's like an echo of the Big Bang that's still reverberating through the universe nearly 14 billion years later. Scientists have also discovered that the universe is still expanding today. When they look at distant galaxies through telescopes, they can see that those galaxies are moving away from us. And the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it's moving away. This is exactly what you would expect if the universe started from a tiny point and has been expanding ever since. Another piece of evidence comes from the abundance of hydrogen and helium in the universe. When scientists calculate how much hydrogen and helium should have been created in the first few minutes after the Big Bang, their predictions matched almost exactly what we observe in the universe today. It's like finding a recipe that perfectly explains the ingredients that we see around us. The Big Bang Theory also explains why the universe looks roughly the same in all directions. I mean, if you look at the night sky from your backyard, and then someone on the other side of the Earth looks at their night sky, you'll both see roughly the same kinds of things. Stars, galaxies, and empty space distributed in similar patterns. This makes sense if everything started from the same tiny point and expanded outward in all directions. But here's something that might blow your mind. The Big Bang Theory doesn't actually explain what caused the Big Bang, or what existed before it. Scientists are still working on those questions. Some think that time itself began with the Big Bang, so asking what happened before the Big Bang might be like asking what's north of the North Pole. It might not even be a meaningful question. 
What scientists do know, though, is that the Big Bang Theory explains an enormous number of observations about our universe. It explains why the universe is expanding, why it's filled mostly with hydrogen and helium, why we can detect the cosmic microwave background radiation, and why the universe looks the way that it does on the largest scales. The Big Bang Theory also led us to some surprising discoveries about the universe. Scientists have found that most of the universe is made up of things that we can't see directly, called dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter seems to hold galaxies together with its gravitational pull, while dark energy seems to be causing the expansion of the universe to speed up. These discoveries show that even though we've learned an incredible amount about the universe, there's still so much more to discover. So, let's recap this cosmic adventure. Everything in the universe started from a tiny, hot, dense point that began expanding 13.8 billion years ago. As it expanded and cooled, the first elements formed, then the first stars, then galaxies, and eventually planets and everything else we see today. The Big Bang wasn't an explosion in space, it was the creation of space itself, and we can still see evidence of it today in the form of cosmic background radiation and the ongoing expansion of the universe. Now, go look up at the night sky and remember that you're seeing the descendants of those very first stars, made from elements cooked up in stellar furnaces billions of years ago. I mean, you're literally made of star stuff, which is pretty cosmic if you ask me. So, here's the whole amazing story in simple terms. A really, really long time ago, like 13.8 billion years ago, everything in the entire universe was squished into a tiny dot smaller than the period at the end of the sentence. Then, boom! I mean, not like a bomb exploding, but, you know, more like a balloon inflating super fast. This created all of the space and time itself. As the cosmic balloon kept getting bigger, it cooled down enough for the first tiny particles to stick together and make hydrogen and helium gas. Gravity then pulled this gas into clumps that became the very first stars, which were like giant nuclear furnaces cooking up heavier elements like the carbon in your body and the oxygen that you breathe. When these massive stars died in spectacular explosions, they scattered these elements everywhere, eventually leading to new stars, planets, galaxies, and ultimately, you. We know this wild story is true because we can still detect the leftover heat from the Big Bang. We can see the universe is still expanding and the math checks out perfectly. So remember, you're made of star stuff. The universe is your cosmic home and science is absolutely mind-blowing when you really think about it.